Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan and today I'm feeling a little sick, a little under the weather, so please excuse me if I sound a little congested. However, we still got some delicious noodles to make, so let's make them. Japchae starts off with some sweet potato vermicelli. These are a very unique type of cellophane or glass noodles. Um, they're thicker than the glass noodles that I usually use, um, and these are specifically Korean, I think it's Danmyung, and they are very good. They're very chewy, very bouncy, and very delicious. Before, I used to cook these like in a pot of boiling water and then drain them and then added them to the noodles, but I found that they would get like congealed in one big clump, and it's just kind of annoying. The best way that I like to make noodles is to you soak them in water first and then I cook them separately in the sauce but I'll show you that part later so for now we'll leave those soaking and now we are working on our carrots I am shredding a ginormous carrot to make the carrot side dish now the way that I prepare japchae is the same way that I prepare bibimbap and kimbap I make all of the components separately and I season them separately because usually when I buy like a bunch of vegetables for either dish they come in much larger quantities than I need for one batch of that recipe so what I'll do is I'll cook the whole batch of those ingredients ingredients and I'll use them for bibimbap, gimbap, or japchae. Uh, if you want any of those recipes, I don't really have a recipe for gimbap because it's just like bibimbap but just rolled up. I just use the same ingredients plus the uh, pickles, the pickled burdock and the pickled turnip. So I think I have a reel of that or a, a YouTube short so I can I can link that down below. Maybe one of these days I'll make a blog post about it but like I don't I don't really feel like my gimbap is that well made so I just whatever anyway so I've prepared the mushrooms these are flower mushrooms or shiitake mushrooms and I'm seasoning them like bulgogi here I'm using some brown sugar because I ran out of oleosaccharide but a lot of times when I'm doing Korean cooking I will use oleosaccharide which is a type of like cooking syrup it just adds like a really nice glossiness and texture to the noodles and their components it adds sweetness but it also isn't too sweet which is what I really like about it but like I said you can use brown sugar which is what I'm using today. You can use maple syrup, you can use whatever liquid sweetener you'd like, but cooking syrup does add a very particular glossiness that I find no other sweetener can do. And actually when I was making the sauce I forgot to add oleosaccharide because I had saved what I had left of the one bottle for the sauce for the noodles. But yeah, I forgot. So if you notice my noodles are like sticking together a little bit more, normally they have a little bit more slip with the cooking syrup. So here I'm preparing some Korean spinach. This is different from the traditional sp spinach that like I normally have. You can use baby spinach, you can use like chopped spinach or whatever, it doesn't really matter, but I do like the texture of Korean spinach. I like the stem of it and I find that it, it works really well in Jepchae because it's just easier to pick up. Honestly, it is very affordable. So like I said, I make one giant pot. So I blanch the whole package of this and then I squeeze out all the water and I season it so that the, the whole batch is seasoned adequately. And then when I add it to whatever dish I'm making, be it Jepchae, Gimbap, or Bibimbap, each individual component is seasoned perfectly. Ever since, you know, I was pregnant, I started to find that I didn't have limitless time to prepare food. I have really gotten on board with meal prepping. However, I still can't eat meal prepped food three or four days in a row. Like, I think four days is my maximum. Um, obviously, I, I eat leftovers and all that kind of stuff, but I need to vary it up. And so what I love about Korean cuisine is the three dishes, gimbap, bibimbap, and japchae, all use the same banchan. You can just swap the form of that meal prep, and I find it really good. It's a great way for me to add a lot of vegetables to my meals. Every time I eat it, it is like, it feels more fresh because I'm making the bibimbap fresh in the dosat, which is like the, or the stone bowl or japchae. I mean, I can, I can never really go wrong with noodles. I always love noodles. Korean cuisine has like revolutionized meal prep for me. Um, and it is probably my favorite way to meal prep food. Here I'm seasoning the spinach with some minced garlic or a crushed garlic, toasted sesame oil, toasted sesame seeds, and salt. You can adjust the seasoning as you like. I've included the measurements for what I have here for one batch of the noodles um, but like I said I like scale it up and I just go by taste and I just kind of cook with feeling I know that's not very helpful for you but again that's why I have the recipe on the side but for me when I cook I just kind of like throw stuff together holy moly as this voiceover goes on I'm just getting more and more congested which is very fun we're cooking the last components of uh, the vegetables which is some bell pepper now I don't really like bell pepper anymore it's like a textural thing Eddie doesn't like bell pepper at all but it does add a specific pop of color that I find is kind of essential to Jepche. So I'm adding a little bit and I chop it into thin slivers and then I'm also adding some fried tofu. Traditionally 
Typically, japchae is made with either like beef or pork. I think sometimes you do see tofu in it, but I like to add it into like strips. You can also just like omit protein from japchae and sit like serve protein on the side. So you can make like bulgogi, seitan or something. I don't know. I, I don't have the brain capacity to think of other suggestions right now, but I usually just put tofu in it so that I don't have to think about it. You can also season the tofu like bulgogi. I just throw it in the pan and I decided either like a little soy sauce, a little salt, or I just like don't bother. And I just like let the other ingredients, you know, add their own seasoning to this. It'll taste better if you season it. I just didn't do it here. But as you can see, I'm using the same wok for every single component. Um, and it's okay if it all, you know, absorbs some of the same flavor because it's all going in the same place eventually. But it is important to season each component. Otherwise you might have like as an example here, some tofu that isn't very seasoned or, you know, carrots that don't have seasoning or spinach doesn't have seasoning. So I like to season everything together separately and then add it all together. Now to make the sauce, you just put a bunch of things in a bowl and a bunch of water. Now I start with one cup of water and you can either start with less and then add more as you need it. But I find one cup of water is like exactly perfect. So the main components of the sauce are soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, rice vinegar, dark soy sauce for color, sugar or cooking syrup, but I forgot, and water. So here are the noodles that are drained. And once they're soaked, they're like nice and pliable. And like, you know, obviously they're still uncooked, but they're a lot more flexible than they were pre-soaking. And then you just turn on the heat and then you cook everything through. The noodles will soak up the sauce very evenly and they won't stick together because they're all cooked in the sauce together. Plus if you have enough oil and enough uh, sugar or sugar syrup, um, they won't stick together. These noodles are also like notoriously really long. I highly recommend cutting them. So I just take scissors and I cut them into like five or six inch size pieces. You cut it as to like whatever length that you want. But personally, when I'm eating, I don't want to pick up like a ginormous clump of noodles and just pick up basically the entire bowl of noodles. It's very fun, but it, it does make things difficult to eat. So just cutting it ahead of time when you're cooking it like this, it just makes it a little bit easier to consume. Once your noodles are cooked through and cut, add in your flat chives or scallions. Use whichever you like. I had flat chives here and I really like flat chive flavor. So that's what I'm using, but you can also just use scallions. Then you add your cooked components. So this is the bell pepper and the tofu, the carrots and the spinach and mushrooms. Now, like I said, you don't have to use the whole amount of the ingredients that you prepared, just enough so you have, you know, a, a little bit of vegetable goodness with every bite. And then you just give it a mix. It's beautiful, it's delicious, it's the perfect party food, and it's probably one of my favorite Korean dishes. It's just a great time. Uh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Voila. Mmm. Mmm. Perfectly cooked noodles. Mmm, 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 mmm. Want some? You just like when I was in your first video, but I would just be behind the camera. Oh my God, babies eating noodles is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> oh my God, it's so cute. Uh, this is very delicious. It makes about like, one, two, three, four, five, like six servings. Um, but if you are gluttonous like me, it'll probably be four. This kid is like licking their lips. <laughs> yeah, you want more? This is a big hit in our house, clearly. Ah, not the dead, dead cat. There you go. Anyway, this is the recipe. I hope you like it. Yeah, unfortunately it's like not an easy recipe to just like make a small amount of. It's definitely a party food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want more? Here. <laughs> you just swallow those whole, don't you? You don't chew them. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I forgot to film an, an outro, but uh, I appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate you hyping me up for all the recent uploads. Yeah, if you want the recipe, it's linked down below. It is always available on thevietvegan.com. I hope you have a delicious day. Goodbye.